Welcome back. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about how exactly we built a product backlog based on the customer needs involving customer in the entire process of building a product backlog, right? Uh, so it starts with the product management team working closely with the stakeholders, the customers to really identify the customer problem statements and then converting them into a set of backlog items, right? A high level requirement of each and every feature, which will be further broken down into something called as stories, right? So in Agile, we say that we capture the requirements in the form of user stories, right? So we break down the high level requirements into smaller, smaller pieces of requirements, which can be developed, tested, built, right? And ready to be deployed in any given iteration, right? So what exactly this product backlog contains is, your product backlog is going to contain the list of all the requirements, the to-do list, which has to be there in the software product, right? So. Uh, you talk about features, you talk about uh, epics, you talk about uh, user stories, right? You talk about uh, non-functional requirements, you talk about defects, all these things will be listed as part of the product backlog. So all these are part of your product backlog, right? Uh, the product backlog also have to be estimated by the development team members. So the product management team has to ensure that they go talk to the users, collect the requirements, convert them into stories, capture that in the form of a product backlog, also talk with the development team and understand what it takes to build a particular user story. So these are nothing but estimates. Always remember both the estimates as well as the product backlog items continuously keep on changing when it comes to the contents which is there in the product backlog. So expect them to get changed as you go with the actual execution process, right? And also remember, once you start collecting the requirements, think about identifying from MVP point of view, that is nothing but minimum viable product, right? only talk about the requirements which was, which is most useful for end users at that particular point of time. So identify them, convert them into a product backlog item in the form of a user story, right? Remember, the backlog items need not be so perfect, right? It's just a collection of requirements, right, at the end of the day, right? the beautification and the addition of details to each and every product backlog item can be done as and when we are approaching to the development of a particular user requirement. So how exactly this entire process happens, right? Whether identifying uh, your MVP or collection of requirements, right? You first have to identify different personas. Personas are nothing but these you can think of an end user category who actually interacts with your system that you are developing, right? So you have to identify these different personas. For example, say uh, if you are developing a defect management tool, right? You will have an admin user, you will have a guest user, you will have a registered users you will have a privileged users. So similarly, each of these categories, we call them, each of them is called as personas, right? So you need to first identify the personas which actually interacts with your system that you are going to build, right? So identify all of those personas, list them somewhere, right? And capture all the requirements in the form of how do these personas actually interact with your system, right? So once that is done, you identify what are your epics are. Epics are nothing but your high level requirements, which will be further broken down into features and user stories, right? Once you identify the user stories, 
The next exercise is to identify the MVP for your product and that can be done using a technique called as story mapping. What you do is for example, create a visible chart and list down all the requirements that have been identified so far and under each of the requirements you list down what are the mandatory user stories which has to be part of your version 1 of the product and draw a kind of a graphical representation to really give you a meaning in terms of in feature 1 what are the list of user stories that the team might develop on as part of the version 1 of the product right. So, continuously talk with your customer, talk with the software development team. So, the product management team have to ensure that both IT and business right they talk and identify what should be the MVP for the version 1 of the product which they are going to build. And it is not just about version 1 of the product in future also irrespective of which version of the product you are in. This is how you have to go about identifying your stories and identifying what should be the part of the initial release of your product right. So, that is how you start building your uh, uh, software product. So, as an example you can see uh, one of the examples just to have a better understanding about how exactly you can create the MVP of a product by using uh, story mapping as a technique right. Uh, so, here if you see you have identified the different kinds of users right, uh, what is the goals that each of the category of users are supposed to achieve, what all features will be required for each of these users the task associated with it and how you can actually draw a map to identify which actually have to be gone into the version 1 of the product. Let us understand in what details you have to capture the user stories right. Uh, as I keep telling right every user story which is at the top of the product backlog those are the set of stories which for which you might have to have more details because the work for those user stories is going to get started. So, based on when a feature is have to be started, the development of a feature has to be started, you might have to add more details pertaining to that particular story. Anything which you think will be developed after 4, 5, 6 months, you can think of being there in the product backlog, but only at a high level description. You do not have to capture any details pertaining to those requirements couple of things you might have to understand is every time there is a feedback from the customer you might have to again rearrange the product backlog items which are there in your product backlog right. Uh, some of the things might get deleted in the process, some of the user stories or uh, might get added in between of the development, some of them while discussing about the user story you might come up with more details which needs to be captured in the product backlog description right. So, you might have to refine them indicates that suppose there is a story which the development feels that it is long enough that it cannot be developed within one particular iteration. So, they might ask the product management team to split that particular story. So, work with the engineering team work with the customer identify what are the product backlog items identify in which order they are supposed to be developed. And at the same time you keep on refining the way that you have developed your product backlog and whatever is of not necessary try to delete them from your product backlog. So, product management team right the role product owner when it comes to scrum has to ensure that he manages this entire product backlog and he takes care of this particular product backlog similar to how the development team takes care of the code that, that gets written for the product right. So, similarly the product owner has to ensure that it is taken care, it is prioritized always, you keep on refining the product backlog as and when you get the feedback and so there is continuous work which is happening when it comes to managing a product backlog. And the product owner has to work with both the customers 
as well as the engineering team so that the product backlog is effectively managed. So this brings us uh, to the end of this particular video uh, where we talked about uh, product backlog, how a product management team has to manage a product backlog and also we talked about how we can identify the MVP for a product, right? Uh, I hope you like this particular video. Uh, the next video will talk about how uh, engineering team as well as the product management team uh, works in parallel with agile software development. Thank you.